Identification Having recognized God as the advancing presence in nature, society, and your fellow men, and harmonized yourself with all these, and having consecrated yourself to that within you which impels toward the greatest and the highest, the next step is to become aware of and recognize fully the fact that the principle of power within you is God Himself. You must consciously identify yourself with the highest. This is not some false or untrue position to be assumed. It is a fact to be recognized. You are already one with God. You want to become consciously aware of it. There is one substance, the source of all things, and this substance has within itself the power which creates all things. All power is inherent in it. This substance is conscious and thinks it works with perfect understanding and intelligence. You know that this is so because you know that substance exists and that consciousness exists and that it must be substance which is conscious. Man is conscious and thinks. Man is substance. He must be substance else he is nothing and does not exist at all. If man is substance and thinks and is conscious, then he is conscious substance. It is not conceivable that there should be more than one conscious substance. So man is the original substance, the source of all life and power embodied in a physical form. Man cannot be something different from God. Intelligence is one and the same everywhere, and must be everywhere an attribute of the same substance. There cannot be one kind of intelligence in God and another kind of intelligence in man. Intelligence can only be in intelligent substance, and intelligent substance is God. Man is of one stuff with God, and so all the talents, powers, and possibilities that are in God are in man. Not in a few exceptional men, but in every man. All power is given to man, in heaven and on earth. Is it not written, Ye are gods? The principle of power in man is man himself, and man himself is God. But while man is original substance and has within him all power and possibilities, his consciousness is limited. He does not know all there is to know, and so he is liable to error and mistake. To save himself from these, he must unite his mind to that outside him which does know all. He must become consciously one with God. There is a mind surrounding him on every side, closer than breathing, nearer than hands and feet, and in this mind is the memory of all that has ever happened, from the greatest convulsions of nature in prehistoric days to the fall of a sparrow in this present time and all that is in existence now as well. Held in this mind is the great purpose which is behind all nature, and so it knows what is going to be. Man is surrounded by a mind which knows all there is to know, past, present, and to come. Everything that men have said or done or written is present there. Man is of one identical stuff with this mind. He proceeded from it, and he can so identify himself with it that he may know what it knows. My father is greater than I, said Jesus. I come from him. I and my father are one. He showeth the Son all things. The Spirit shall guide you into all truth. Your identification of yourself with the infinite must be accomplished by conscious recognition on your part, recognizing it as a fact that there is only God and that all intelligence is in the one substance. You must affirm somewhat after this wise, There is only one, and that one is everywhere. I surrender myself to conscious unity with the highest, not I, but the Father. I will to be one with the Supreme and to lead the divine life. I am one with infinite consciousness. There is but one mind, and I am that mind. I that speak unto you am he. 
If you have been thorough in the work as outlined in the preceding chapters, if you have attained to the true viewpoint, and if your consecration is complete, you will not find conscious identification hard to attain. And once it is attained, the power you seek is yours, for you have made yourself one with all the power there is. End of chapter 9